Chris is the Director of Enterprise Solutions uh, for Partner Sales. Programs and partner Sales. Partner Programs and mm -hmm. Sales at, at Oracle. Yes. Uh, welcome. Thank you. So, um, quite an event. <laughs> it um, is quite an event. Amazing here. We've had a great day today. We've had uh, over 100,000 views of, uh, of the, the live stream. So, awesome. Uh, we still got a lot of people watching. Um, so you're our first Oracle guest in the queue at Oracle. Ever. Oracle. This is our second year. Uh, you know, we're trying to get Larry to come in. He's not getting back Zafra, to us. Zafra, no way. Um, so <laughs> appreciate it. Um, <laughs> the question that I have is, obviously, we've been following Exit Data for uh, quite a uh, since since it's been around, and it's just been remarkable the success of Exit Data. Obviously, now the analytics. We just had Bill Schmarzo from EMC okay. essentially saying, Oracle, great move, with the analytics, mm -hmm. double down. What's the What's your take on why Exadata is so popular? You know, um, in general, I just think it's a game-changing technology, and I'm certainly not the technologist, I'm a salesperson. Um, but I think coming from the partner side, um, it's just provided a new entry level for our partners on the both hardware and software side. So it's great innovation. So what exactly is your role at Oracle? Talk about that a little uh, so bit. So I work for a group called the Enterprise Solutions Group, and we're an enabling sales team for both the direct and indirect selling organization. Uh, we report up through Keith Block, and uh, it's, a, it's a great organization uh, to help enable and build pipeline for Oracle and sales team. So, so give me an example of some of the more interesting things that you're working on. What's, what's hot in the market today? Uh, I can explain to you uh, the role that I do and the reason that QLogic and I are partnering, we were partnering is we uh, sponsor what's called X Week Quarterly uh, for the Enterprise Solutions Group, and we're, we have the uh, role of uh, actually training our sales consulting groups on you know, real life topics like Exadata, et cetera. And uh, QLogic is actually one of our sponsors for that event. So they do presentations for us. They talk about how their technology works within our environments, et cetera. Okay, so, um, so do you have more of an infrastructure focus? Is that fair or is it across the board? Or? Uh, my role in particular is more of, a, is more of an enabling, like, like on the training side, uh, but we do have solution experts you know, in our team that actually take a look at technologies and uh, take a look at where the market's going and try to be ahead of where the, you know, setting the stage for the sales team. So you think of QLogic, you think of you know, it's storage, networking, fiber channel, IO, InfiniBand, mm -hmm. switching. Uh, what's, you know, what do you see going on there? In, in so from an infrastructure perspective, to your point, um, there are a lot of changes going on. Um, but I think the, the great thing about it is when you take the Exadata box and you take a look at like our backup and recovery solutions, it's a great mix of, of pulling all of our technologies together. How, how, now how long have you been at Oracle? Uh, I, two years. Two years. So I came over so with, came the, with Sun. the Sun acquisition. Mm -hmm. Okay, how are they treating you? They're treating me great. <laughs> you love it, right? <laughs> <laughs> on live TV, it Chris. It was a keynote Larry gave <laughs> yesterday. It was. I mean, everyone's like, wow, it that's Sun great. Microsystems. <laughs> yeah, it was um, great. John Fowler's up there doing his thing. John uh, goes it's tomorrow, exciting. right? It's really exciting. Yeah, the Sun, I wrote today in a blog that I thought the Sun acquisition was amongst the top three that I could name in the, the history of the the industry. I don't know, maybe I'm stretching on that. But, uh, I, I don't have a comment on that but one. It's, but it's yeah. up there. No, I, yeah. I just, I'm just pointing out that uh, we're definitely high in the acquisition. I mean, it's sort of game changing in the enterprise. I would agree with yeah. that. So what are the, just to get, because I know we don't want to go too deep into Oracle because you really don't have any comment, official comment on Oracle strategy, but in general, out in the marketplace, what are you seeing as the top trends? I mean, you're dealing with uh, partners in, in the marketplace and the ecosystem. What are the top things that are on people's mind these days? Obviously the cloud's big. What are the big high level trends that you're seeing? Um, I just think in general, when you talk to our typical reseller partner, um, they're going to market in a different way. You know, where they could typically move some hardware and make some money in margin and maintain that for a while, and they could sell software and they could make some money there. I think what they're recognizing, as, as Oracle is, is that you know, based on engineered solutions, there's a, a more of an opportunity to bring solve business problems at the customer. And I think that's what the partners are recognizing as well. So, that, so let's drill into that a little bit. I mean, that sounds good. I mean, it makes it makes sense. But a lot of the partners have have made a lot of money off of doing that. You know, tricky integration. So when you come in with a solution that's engineered together, it's all pre-tested, pre-engineered. I mean, it it, it somewhat takes up that value away from them. So in a way, they have to change, don't they? I mean, what are you seeing there? So I would have said yes a few years ago. They would probably have uh, not recognized that as a value, but a com competitive feature. Uh -huh. But I think today, uh, based on the fact that they really are trying to go to a solutions-based consultative sale, where they can recognize more revenue and de deeper margins, I think that they're actually uh, they're on board. And I've talked to several partners while here, and 
they're very excited did about you it. see in that two-year period um, sort of a transformation of the existing strong partners or did you see a shift where you had new disruptive partners come in who embraced that model well, how would you characterize that that transition over the last two years it's been a big one you know I think on all sides for, for Oracle on the partner side but I, I, I will, on the software side, because those partners have been traditional and understand how Oracle works and have, uh, have been around for a while, I think that they jumped on the bandwagon probably a little bit earlier, um, but the hardware guys are right behind them right now. So I think that there's just a really great mix of both now at, at Oracle. How about, how about culturally? You know, coming from Sun, kind of West Coast, you know, wild West Coast. Um, compare the cultures of Sun and Oracle. How, how is it different? I don't know if I can really compare it. I came from Storage Tech originally. Oh, really? So okay. it's a lot of the same. Are you, for, are you based in Colorado? I or? am. Oh, you are? Okay. I am. So I'm, I was used to the culture, and I think in general it's blended very well. And I think we're all learning from each other. Well, so, so Storage Tech to Sun must have been kind of a culture shock. That was very different. Right? And Sun to Oracle's got to be somewhat different. I mean, both West Coast companies. But yeah. But going through the transition a second time was a lot easier than the first time. How long were you at Storage Tech? Uh, I've been in total between Storage Tech, Sun, and Oracle almost 12 years. 12 years, okay, yeah. yeah. Storage Tech, I used to follow Storage Tech very closely. Yeah, it was a good company. I, fo I followed Storage Tech. I started following Storage Tech, John, about six months before it went into Chapter 11. You <laughs> probably, Chris, don't even remember that. That's no, I don't. how old I am. <laughs> and then Storage Tech came out of Chapter 11, a very famous story led by a guy named Ryle Poppy, who, uh, rest his soul, is uh, quite a leader. But, uh, and then Storage Tech was an icon of the industry for a long, long time. They call it Storage Row still. What's that? Storage Row through Colorado through the main corridor of 36. Yeah, it was out there recently, and the old the Storage Tech facility looks like it's quite gone through quite a few changes. It's not <laughs> there. It's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that whole area has just grown up unbelievable. It has. Uh, you know, the Longmont area used to be able to just drive back there on 36, and it was just fields, empty. Not anymore. No, not anymore. And you used to be able to go from, you know, Aurora to the Springs, and it was nothing, and now it's just, you know, all built up. So that Colorado's a great place to live, and people booming. know it now, yeah. Yeah, so could you have like incredible cardiovascular capabilities like everybody else I know in Colorado? No. Or no, you don't no. climb 14,000 foot mountains? And, no. No? A lot of people do, I do not. Yeah. <laughs> Boulder's booming right now. Boulder tech scene is, is on fire. Love Boulder, yeah. So it's a good, good place to live. Well, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. Oracle Open World's been great to us. Uh, again, second year in a row, we snuck in through QLogic. We would not be here if it wasn't for QLogic, so great that you partnered with those guys and they worked, you worked together with them. So. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, you guys. Okay. Have a great day. Okay, thank Thanks you very much. See ya.